So you're looking to generate accurate photogrammetry models, but don't have the money to spend on RTK drones like this? What do you do? Well before RTK-based drone mapping existed, ground control points, or GCPs like this, have been used and are still in use to this day to generate accurate orthomosaic maps without the need of RTK equipment. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to capture, process, and deliver highly accurate orthomosaics with basically any drone using GCPs. So let's get started. Hey guys, Dylan Gorman here. Welcome back to another video. I've been a commercial pilot for over nine plus years, mainly focusing on drone photogrammetry. And one of the most common questions I get is, how do you capture survey grade accurate maps with your drone if you aren't using RTK? Well, for one, since I'm not a surveyor, I cannot claim that I produce survey grade accurate maps, but what I can provide is highly accurate maps using the same methodology that surveyors use. And that is by tying an orthomosaic model to GCPs that are typically set by surveyors. So. How exactly do ground control points work? I think before we discuss how ground control points work for photogrammetry, we need to understand how ground control points are first captured and created. Ground control points or GCPs are marked points on the ground that have a known geographic location. For aerial survey applications, GCPs are typically required as they can enhance the positioning and accuracy of the mapping outputs. To do this correctly, the GCPs and desired mapping outputs must use the same EPSG code. The European Petroleum Survey Group, EPSG, collected and standardized a large list of spatial reference systems. An EPSG code is simply shorthand for the full definition of a specific spatial reference system. Why does everything use EPSG codes? Because the companies that formed the EPSG had the most to gain from creating really simple and accurate guide to spatial reference systems, so they took the time to compile the best database of reference systems that has since been adopted by other companies, governments, ESRI, and nearly all GIS professionals. So now that we define what a ground control point is, how does one get set by a surveyor and how do you get access to them? Well, for one, a surveyor will use a GNSS receiver or a GPS head, base or rover system to go and set these physical control points themselves. And the way that they mark them is using nails, wooden posts, or a multitude of monuments and, and other equipment that they can use to physically mark these locations. So you as the commercial drone pilot that's gonna go out and map these locations with your aerial targets, you need to find these monuments, nails, or wooden posts to go and place your aerial target over, which we'll go and demonstrate when we get into the field. Now, why not just use an RTK capable drone? Well, the reason why we are showing you how to do ground control points rather than using RTK is, well, it's cheaper. RTK drones are very expensive and the additional equipment outside of it, such as the GPS systems and the base stations and all of the other systems that require you to have an accurate and proper RTK flight, they just cost a whole lot more money. And for a lot of people in the industry, they don't wanna spend the five, 10, $15,000 that it costs to even get remotely close to that RTK capable hardware. So rather than going and dropping, you know, $5,000 on a Mavic 3 Enterprise, plus the $3,600 they have to spend for the DRTK2 base station, using something like a $1,500 to $2,000 drone that is already capable of generating very accurate visuals, right? You can tie those visual data, the JPEGs, the photos that you take from your mapping mission to ground control points which is what we're gonna do out in the field. So rather than me explain how it works, why don't we go ahead and jump into the field and see how this all works. So before we get the drone up in the air, let's talk about the equipment that you're gonna need so that you can capture this data properly. First of all, you're gonna need a drone that is capable of following an automated flight mission, whether that's using software like Drone Deploy, DJI Pilot 2, or like what we have here, Autel's automated flight missions that they have for their drones. You're gonna need that so that we have all of the photos captured in a systematic way. The next thing you're going to need is a ground control point aerial target. I got this one off of Amazon, which I'll link down below, but something like this so that you can see exactly where those ground control points are in your data that you're capturing. And the last bit that you'll need is a control book or a control map that shows all of the control points on the project site that you're working on. This is typically supplied by a surveyor if you're not a surveyor yourself. And this is how we're actually going to tie the orthomosaic data that we capture from the drones to the physical location on the ground of the ground control points, which is what we covered right before this. So with that being said, why don't we go ahead and get the drone up and capture the control points that I already set behind me with the demo project of basically a parcel of land right behind me. We're gonna simulate what it's like to capture a data set for a pre-development project. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get this set up.
Okay, so before we continue on with the video, I quickly want to hop on here and talk about the drone photogrammetry workshops that I'm hosting all throughout the states next year. Currently, I have about 14 locations up live and ready for you to book. So if you've ever wanted to have a drone photogrammetry hands on in person training with other people in the industry as well, this is your time. Within the workshops, you'll learn everything about drone photogrammetry from the history to the equipment and software and even getting hands on training and education on doing your first drone photogrammetry mission and even doing data processing. On top of that, you'll get my drone photogrammetry course for free, which I recently just released and you'll get a free pilot bite polo. So if that's something that you're interested in, be sure to check down below to see my workshop tour list. And I can't wait to see you guys there. So let's continue on with this video. All right, so now that we're back from the field and in front of the computer, let's go ahead and get some data processed. Now for data processing software with doing GCP alignment, there's all kinds of different ones out there. For this example, I'm gonna be using Drone Deploy, but you can use Pix4D Mapper, there's Maps Made Easy, and there's a whole host of other softwares out there too that support the same methodology that we're putting into practice here. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump onto the desktop here, and you can already notice that I have our RTK data and our basic data already up and processing, so all that we have to worry about right now is doing the same process for the GCPs, but actually tying the ground control points to the map that we just flew. So. Before we actually upload the data, let's go ahead and take a look at the control points that we're going to be uploading. So Drone Deploy has a template file here called Northing Easting in US Survey Feet here. So we're going to take all of these labels here and we have a GCP label, our Northing, Easting, and Elevation. So we also have another file here that we got from our surveyor, which this is the quote unquote control book of all the controls that are set on the property that we captured. So you can see the name Easting, Northing, and Elevation is here the exact same. The only thing that we do care about is the actual coordinate system that we use. So we use NAD 83 2011 and we flew this in Florida West with US survey feet. But let's go ahead and take all of these names here and we're going to copy it into the GCP label. So let's take our Easting and paste it here, take our Northing the same and then let's take our elevation as well and paste it here and we're just going to go ahead and save that file now we can close out of both of these and let's go ahead and upload a model here so once we have all of our photos selected and uploaded in here we'll see that they start processing great we can see the exact flight path that it took now before we click upload images we want to upload our control point map so once we've located that template file which is right here I'm gonna go ahead and open that. And we can see all four corners here of where the controls are, as well as this one that is right here in the center. And just like before, NAD 83, 2011, and Florida West foot US for our EPSG code. And I understand add GCPs, great. Now we'll click upload. So then once all of these photos are uploaded, I have to wait just about 10, 15 minutes, and then I'll get an email from Drone Deploy letting me know, hey, you are ready to go ahead and tag and align your ground control points based off of all of the photos that it can see those ground controls from the automated mission that we flew. So we'll go ahead and let this upload and I'll jump back on here once we are ready to do that. All right, so now that we're ready for tagging the GCPs for processing, let's go ahead and start that process. So all I have to do is just click on the prompt there and now we can go ahead and take a look and properly tag these control points. So we can already see that there appears to be an error on some of these control points. And it looks like it was probably my fault because I used two aerial tags that had similar uh, numbers, really looks like the same number. So let's just go ahead and start with number five here and get this all aligned up. So we'll just go ahead and click on the edit tab and it's gonna bring us into a window so we can properly center these green points. So we'll start with this first one. Let's go ahead and just center this guy right here. Do the same with this one. Just do a little bit of cleaning up like so. So all we have to do is just, once we're done with that, we hit it submit for processing and we'll go ahead and clean up the rest of this list. Once that's done, we just go ahead and hit submit. All right, so now that the data is all finally processed here in Drone Deploy, let's go ahead and take a look at just the base map that we produced not even tied to ground control points and not even the RTK data. Visually, these drones are basically going to produce the same exact model, but we can go ahead and see here, look, this is one of the GCP points that we're going to be tying our data to. But overall, I mean, we're used to seeing orthomosaic data. I've showed this 
several times in several of my other videos. And there's even some 3D variation of it as well. But let's take a look at the map details here. So our average RMSE is about a foot of accuracy, which is not even close to the ASPRS standard, which is a tenth of a foot of accuracy for aerial mapping. Surveyors and engineers and architects can't really do much with this kind of data, but everybody else that's using this data for other reasons, whether it's for visual inspection or asset management or, or whatever else they're using it for, it's more than adequate for those purposes. So let's take a look at the GCP demo here with our tied ground control point. So we can go ahead and highlight all of the ground controls that were set on this site. And just so you know, I set these controls myself. So these aren't gonna be 100% accurate to what a surveyor would do themselves, but I still use the exact same methodology and I use Florida Departments of Transportation and Trip Network to tie all of these points to a fixed base station, which surveyors would also do the exact same thing here in Florida. So now that we got that out of the way, go ahead and look at the map details here. We can look that our RMSE is below, looks like less than a 10th of a foot already. If we go ahead and look at the process report here, pull it up, our GPS truss was about 32 feet. So obviously that's not great, but because we tied that visual data to a known point, those ground control points, our actual RMSE is 0.34 of an inch, way better than a foot of accuracy for our actual GPS accuracy for our orthomosaic model here. And here's our actual chart of the data that we tied to it. So our X and Y are pretty closely related and our actual elevation uh, is the one that kind of threw off that entire model the most, but still, this is still very usable data. And again, if you're working with a surveyor or you are a surveyor yourself, you know that you can generate better controls than what I'm able to do. Again, I use the same methodology, but not the same exact equipment. I use a $2,000 GPS head rather than some of the other five, 10, 15, $20,000 GPS heads that real surveyors use. And just for reference, I have an RTK data set that was captured right across the street. We were doing an intersection simulation model and they wanted to use the RTK model rather than using GCPs because we didn't want to put any of the aerial tags in the middle of the street. It's just not safe, pretty dangerous, especially when there's tons of cars moving about during the day. So here is our RTK model here. And just so you can see it, you can see the Google Maps here on the right and our RTK data visuals on the left. And if we go to those map details, again, these were this is literally captured right across the street from where our other model was initially captured. And we can already see that going into the process report, our average GPS trust, because we're using RTK to do the mapping is less than half of a tenth of a foot, basically. And scrolling down here to our RMSE, we are 0.02 of a foot of accuracy and this is the reason why people use RTK, but you have to remember, this is about a $9,000 setup where this one was only $2,000 and the aerial tags that I used were only 75 bucks to get a pack of 10. Again, there was a link down in the description below if you wanna get access to those. But you can see that, yes, there is more work to do the ground control point capture, but you're also able to generate a really good, accurate model. Of course, using real survey data, you can get your RMSE lower and closer to an RTK data set. But overall, far cheaper to use GCPs than it is for RTK data capture. So if you found this video interesting and you wanna learn more about ground control points or really everything about drone photogrammetry, I just released a course on my website, Pilot Byte. So be sure to check the description down below. It literally condenses all five plus years of my experience doing drone photogrammetry into a comprehensive course that breaks everything down for you. From the history of photogrammetry to the different softwares and equipment that you can use to actually going and capturing data sets for different kinds of clients, ground control points, just like what we talked about, but more in depth, RTK and so much more. And it's also getting updated every single month with new content. So you pay once, you get it for life. And if you want access to that, I've got a link down below. I'm still running my New Year's discount, so be sure to grab it before that time ends. And with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you wanna see more from me in the future, be sure to subscribe. If you liked it, give it a like. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, drop them in the comment section down below. I'd love to have a conversation with you guys. And with that being said, I will see you guys in the next one.